Hello. Uh, in honor of Star Wars Episode Eight, The Last Jedi being out, um, I will talk about that move, but uh, you know, since I love Star Wars, I, don't know, I guess my initial reaction for something like this, uh, gonna wait a bit to hold off on my thoughts on it, and I thought, you know. Some time ago, I did a movie about like uh, how his, uh, third films are kind of uh, said to be not that great or not as good uh, compared to the first three or first two, I should say. Um, I talked about uh, Dark Knight Rises. I gave my little thing about that. Um, didn't go too in depth. I don't know how when. And I have some plot points here, or bullet points, I guess I should say. Um, uh, and, you know, I'm talking about Return of the Jedi. Um, I'm sure uh, if you couldn't tell by the title or thumbnail. Um, yeah, one thing I want to, one reason I wanted to say that stuff about this film, because I love this movie. Uh, to me, uh, um, it's tied as my second favorite Star Wars movie with Empire Strikes Back. Um, episode 4, as you all know, is my favorite Star Wars movie. Um, and, um, and these bullet points are, were, uh, these points were made by, um, Sam Witwer, Witwer, who, uh, voices, who voiced, uh, Starkiller in the video games The Force Awakens, as well as Emperor Palpatine in that game. And... Every point he made, I basically always knew, but uh, there's a video I can, I guess I could link in the description, though, I guess I am uh, already, uh, I'm already giving these points, so it, it might be a complete waste, but maybe you'd rather hear from someone else, I don't know. or maybe I'll just watch this and see what he said, because I'm going to kind of explain or expand on certain things. And some, uh, you know, uh, but, yeah, you know, again, everything he said in the video, I knew, basically, and I'm like, yeah, I don't feel the need to, you know, like, say anything, because I'm like, it seemed obvious to me, and then heard when people weren't fond of uh, the film as much as the other two, I kind of was a little perplexed and scratched my head at, but anyway, yeah, to the point now. Uh, one thing is, that is mentioned is like, uh, apparently that some people have a problem with, it seems, is with Luke redeeming his father. The, the thing is that the interest of Darth Vader actually comes because of Return of the Jedi, as there's more complexity and depth. It is not because of Empire Strikes Back. The most revealing thing about Vader in that film is he reveals himself to be Luke's father. It's only after Jedi and rewatching Empire you see the layers of Vader. Sorry for bumping this. You know, that's, an, that's a good point because, I mean, because in episodes 4 and 5, you know, the prequels, you know, at that time, like, say you haven't watched the prequels or you haven't. Or they aren't existing yet. You know, if you watch the first two, he's just the bad guy. Vader's just the bad guy trying to get rid of or find the Death Star plans in Episode Four, and then take down the Rebellion. In episode Five, he's trying to take down the Rebellion still, but also is looking for Luke Skywalker. It's only at the very end he said he says to Luke he's his father. Jedi gives more depth into the character. We, you know, we hear his name, Anakin. Um, you know, another reason is that Empire, Luke was basically told to respect his elders by Yoda. This is a different point. No. He kind of goes in better detail of this. Like, he's supposed to respect his elders. You know, like with Yoda. And he didn't, and because of that, like, he like, he was told to finish his training, you know, listen to them, and you know, respect their wishes. But 
Luke didn't do that. He sensed that his friends were in danger, so he went off to uh, save them. No. He didn't listen to Yoda, and instead of him saving his friends, his friends saved him. Uh, now, in Jedi, he then now rejects what his elders are telling him, as they're telling Luke that he has to kill Vader. But Luke is now a man and a full Jedi, and understands that he can't kill his father to win. And by doing this, he proves he is the one true Jedi, because he's not going to kill. You know, Jedis aren't supposed to kill, but Obi-Wan and Yoda feel, uh, when the Return of the Jedi begins, killing Vader is the only way you can win. Doing so, to be able to then kill like, the Emperor, but, you know... Luke is like, you know, I can't just kill him. It's not what you, it's not what Jedi's are supposed to be doing. No. All of these reasons are to make Vader a more sympathetic character, and thus allowing to show the layers of the character that we were, that weren't there in the previous films of the original trilogy. Um, and are then kind of seen more when you watch the trilogy. And then when watching the prequels, you know, knowing that he's, you know, it's, it's a, it's the tragic fall of Anakin into Darth Vader, you know, and then all this wrapping up, it kind of gives some good layers to, uh, to him. <clears throat> now, uh, as many of you know, aside from a science fiction Franchise Star Wars is also in the realm of fantasy as well. You know, I've talked about how it's melodramatic with the acting and the writing and the dialogue. Just a melodramatic space opera, soap opera esque franchise. I mean, it's a, it is a space opera. So George Lucas has said, you know, there's fairy tale aspects of it. So, with that in mind, the Ewoks fit the fairy tale narrative that story that Star Wars has throughout the series. And they re represent the insignificant creature you don't pay attention to and are underestimated uh, but are the ones that you need to help to defeat the great evil. The Ewoks are also the Yoda lesson for all the other characters. Because Empire Luke underestimates that the little green creature he encounters is the most powerful Jedi in the galaxy. Luke, Luke's reaction to him when he, or his reaction to the Ewoks is that when you look at Mark Hamill's performance and uh, Whitworth points this out, like you watch him, he, he's like he, uh, he's, he's seen this before. He's been in a similar situation where he underestimated the small creature and it essentially has Han, Chewie to give up their weapons as he gives up his lightsaber to the Ewoks. And then when they're about to be cooked, Luke basically is saying, no, they're not. And when they're at the tribe, uh, Leia comes and sees them and wonders what's going on. Han doesn't know what's happening, but Luke does. And this also plays into why he's on Endor. He's on Endor to give the list of reasons that have already been given. To become the friends with the Ewoks, because you know they're, you know, they have to be like, well, there's life forms on this planet. Don't know what life forms are, but we're gonna go and try and, you know, deactivate the shield to the Death Star. Um, but you know, becoming friends with the Ewoks, you know, that's his. Prime, that's the prime reason he's there, because he's a Jedi, he's able to use the Force, he's able to help his friends be able to persuade the Ewoks that uh, they are, you know, they can be allies, and they can, together they can all, uh, you know, def defeat this empire together. Um, but I have something to say about that. Um, also, if you think of the Ewoks, think of this, they're, 
not the cute, most cute and cuddly creatures ever, because they were gonna eat Luke, Han, Chewbacca, and do who knows what to R2-D2. Probably they were gonna rip apart R2, and use stuff in him, like all the sharp and pointy objects he has in him, and use them as, like, spears and other things to hunt. Um, but now, the whole Ewok defeating the Empire thing. Uh, this has been said and talked about a lot. Um, with that, that's not... Them defeating the Empire really isn't true. On one hand, they're defending their home. You know. So, even if you were to say that's definitively that they alone defeated the Empire, well, they're defending their home. What would you do if some people who wanted to take control of your home, you know, you know, would you not try and defend it? Um, also, it's one of those interesting stories of the natives with weapons that are homemade, like spears, bows, and arrows, so on, or rocks, logs to smash the ATSTs, sticks. Not necessarily made into arrows or spears, they defeat. They are able to defeat the um, enemy that have superior weapons and are better technologically and practically every way. You know, they use the resources they have to help become victorious, which has happened uh, throughout history. The Empire also underestimates the Ewoks in combat. Now, granted, they're not very strategic, but, you know, they're, they do what they do. Uh, however, unlike the heroes, they, the Empire does not learn this lesson. And also on that, um, the Ewoks did not actually defeat the Empire. Um, it was the Rebels that defeated the Empire on... Uh, Endor. They, the, the, the Ewoks were a distraction, really, and they helped and assisted um, in taking the Empire down. Um, that's another thing I want to mention, because that's true, really. They're there to help distract the Empire. Like, they're too busy focusing on the, you know, the uh, rebels, but then he hears the natives, and it's like, oh, well, they're able to, you know, they have backup, essentially. If anything, you could say they're backup. And they help the rebels defeat the Empire. Yeah. And also, I never hated the Ewoks, I always enjoyed them. You know, they're, they're cool. I thought. Um, also, Return of the Jedi is not a retread of a new hope, as some people say it is, because, you know, while it does have beats, you know, if anything, it's like trying to become come full circle, because for the longest time, as I mentioned before, George Lucas didn't know if he ever wanted to do Star Wars again, so, you know, he wanted to make it, make sure uh, there's a Somewhat familiarity, but it's being, but it's different. Um, uh, one has again, as said earlier, uh, it, uh, Return of the Jedi, you know, takes the best f villain in film history at that time and made him a good guy. You know, they, made, they made him a sympathetic character, and top it by revealing. The Emperor, who was only heard of and was seen in only one scene of Empire, we were finally able to see the true villain of Star Wars. Uh, the one pulling the strings, in a sense. The Puppet Master. Also, at a certain point at the end, it's evident that Luke is on a suicide mission, as he doesn't quite know 
what he's going to do yet to save his father. Things are looking grim with Luke, particularly with phrases like, Soon I'll be dead. Are you with me? Plus, he doesn't know if his father can really be saved. But he isn't giving up hope. All the while, the Emperor is trying to have Luke kill his dad and provoke him to embrace anger and get in touch with the dark side. So there's all this darkness in the film. And as a result of this, the Ewoks give a good balance to the light with all the grim stuff going on with Luke, Vader, and the Emperor. Um, and yeah, there's that goofy stuff at the very beginning um, with the band and Jabba's place, but even then there's some good darkness with the Rancor monster you know, eating whatever falls down there. And then the Sarlacc pit, which will which digests people for like for like a thousand years. So, you know, that's not... That's some dark stuff going on, so by the time we get to the huge, really darkness at the very end with Vader, the Emperor, and Luke, the Ewoks are a good balancing factor for all this darkness, because without them being as lighthearted as they are, it'd be a very grim and depressing, you know, kind of tale. Um, and then... Sam Whitworth goes and says that there are certain, with all this said, there are some certain criticisms that would be somewhat valid. Those are, there could be a execution uh, problem with the Ewoks, perhaps. But, you know, that can be debated, depending on who you talk to. You know, it's myself, they're defending their home, the rebels are helping them. To defeat the Empire for their planet. And really, you know, you know they're essentially a distraction for the rebels to do the main thing that they're there is to, you know, uh, take down the shield generator or the aerial uh, fleet in space to attack the Death Star. The under utilizing of Han Solo uh, because, you know, Harrison Ford was very adamant they kill him off in Jedi, but Lucas was saying no, and having to make Solo be a great part of the film in what could have been looked at as a last second rewrite situation, as Lucas wrote the script with what Kasdan already put down with Lucas's story. Um, though, you know, Again, uh, George Lucas wrote like this 300 page outline originally that he never showed anybody, which was essentially the bulk of the original, which is like the original trilogy, essentially not the bulk, it basically is. Though there are, like, I, from what I've also gathered, because there's not a whole lot of research, or not research, there's not a lot of information about it when I've researched this. There's only a little bit of what George Lucas himself has said about it. It's anywhere from between two it was anywhere before, between 250 and 300 pages, and uh, there's like a few pages or so of talking about you know, Anakin and Obi Wan and Darth Vader doing this and that, and then Darth Vader went to the dark side and killed Anakin. And Obi Wan and Vader are now enemies, and basically. Enemies. Episode 4 essentially begins. Um, so that's where that came from. You know, Lucas had this story and he just wanted it realized. And you know, Han Solo uh, doesn't seem to appear that George Lucas wanted him killed off. And if he ever did plan on killing him off, it was not at the end of Return of the Jedi, not the end of that story. Uh, and we don't know if he did because, you know, New films uh, that are happening. You now we know what happens, uh, but uh, from some of the comments that you know George Lucas has made, it doesn't seem like he would have done that, or if he would have killed him off in Episode Seven. I guess not in that way. Uh, so another criticism is the reuse of the Death Star. But then again, when we're remembering back to A New Hope, the little dialogue for a meeting 
that takes place. Uh, Tark, uh, the Emperor disbanded the Senate. That was announced by Tarkin in the film. And it was based on having the Death Star as basically the enforcing this enforcing power the Emperor will have over the galaxy now. You know, there's no more Senate. Every the last remnants of the Republic are now gone. And now the Death Star, the battle station, is what's going to u be used to persuade uh, planets and systems to follow what the Empire wants you to... Uh, the laws that the Empire wants you to follow and live by. And it'll be fear of this battle station. It's going to, if you don't do what they say, you're going to get blown up. But shortly, as soon as he did that, the Death Star was destroyed shortly thereafter. And as a result, there's this policy about having a Death Star. So it only makes sense that due to the Senate no longer existing, another Death Star is to be built. And they have to make it as fast as possible so they... Or so that they're able to have the power that they had in episode 4. Um, but as we see in the film, it's not yet completed. Um, you know, but it's still fully operational. And the very last thing I'm going to mention here is some people complain about the, you know, Ewoks, which I've already explained by that. Um, you know, originally there were plans for Wookiees that were supposed to be the species of characters or species race of beings on Endor or I guess Kashyyyk or whatever. You know, Ewoks were supposed to be there, but you know. You know, and some people wonder about Chewie's background, where he came from, and all this, when all that came to light. Um, but though Sam Whitwer said, well, you know, people saw the holiday special, and at that time, people might not have wanted to go back to that planet due to the poor reception of that. Now, that was a joke, but, you know, perhaps there was some validity to that. Same there really is, but if there was, it might be very small. And so I think that's good, at least something to mention. Uh, also, another thing is Peter Mayhew was really like the tallest actor at that time in the 70s and 80s. I and mean, there were other tall actors, but they were probably either doing other stuff, or who knows, maybe they didn't want to spend, uh, for whatever reason, so much time. But, you know, nowadays you can get basketball players to be Wookiees. Is, you know, they're around Peter Mayhew's height, but back in the late 70s and early 80s, you know, there weren't as many tall people around. And even if they got, like, let's say, basketball players in 82 to be in the film, depending on the basketball schedule, there may have been a limited time for them to do fitting, rehearsing, and filming parts of the film, as well as the cost of making multiple 7-plus foot suits. But the cost of, like, say, a three-foot Ewok costume in the film, they would be able to stay within the budget of the you know, film. And that, in Return of the Jedi, was like the only film of the trilogy really to be on budget. The first two, you know, went over budget. The first one, there filming problems, problems with the special effects because it was a new thing, like, like the special effects. They were doing were new, they were different. Not exactly something that people had seen before, more realistic. Episode 5, they were, you know, they had a halt production due to some problems going on during filming. So thus, the budget uh, went up a bit more. 
Um, but yeah, just wanted to make this video. Uh, it's 25 minutes. It's a bit longer than Dark Knight Rises video that I made, but you know. Though then again, for that one, I didn't really uh, have a list like this. I'm not sure if I'll ever revisit the Dark Knight Rises kind of thing again and give a better, broader uh, uh, look at sort of the problems people have. But I thought because it's uh, it's Star Wars time apparently. No, it's May. May is Star Wars time, but December. You no, know, we have. Star Wars now coming out, so I thought instead of just doing episode 8 as everybody else seems to be doing, I'd do something different. I hope you liked this and enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.